rates of adoption of new technologies is just so much faster than it's ever been. And so the example I used in my uh, keynote was, you know, it took five decades for, you know, you know, kind of mass adoption of things like TVs and radios and some of that. And then you look at what happened with the PC, you know, back 25 or 30 years ago, and how long it took, you know, I mean, it took 10 years to get to mass adoption, and then cell phones took five years. And you know, if you look at uh, Facebook, you know, in months, they're doing what it took, you know, many, many years for other things to do. So it was just the number of Facebook accounts that came up there. But with it, so adoption happens really quick now. But if you think about the, the mass numbers, are you doing things like Facebook? All it's doing is creating more data. So the, uh, I think the rate of data growth is actually increasing uh, quite, quite a bit faster than people know. And the other thing that's kind of interesting is the people who really are facing that may be kind of new generation companies. So you know, a lot of the, the large and you know, Fortune 100 or may not actually have their data grow as quick as some of the younger you know, upstart companies because it's a data-based uh, company. So you're seeing things in, the, in small, mid-sized enterprises where their, their data needs in some ways are as complex or more than much, much larger, more established companies. Which are the main trends you're seeing? Yeah, I think there, there, it's going to be it's going to be multiple ways where you're going to see the uh, where the data ends up here. So you know, we had uh, McKesson spoke at our conference here, and as he said, he's not putting his data in the cloud. It's it's important healthcare information. They want to make sure they have a lot of security around it. They uh, you know, can put some of their their efforts around those types of things. Other people, though, some of these new uh, new companies are starting up or whatever. It's very economical for them to leverage the cloud, right? They can uh, not have to build data centers and build all that infrastructure. They can put their money into other things. So for us, the answer is you have to do both. You know, you kind of have to do the, the, the private guy is going to do his own thing and have the best alternative there. But then also we view the cloud as just another way to sell storage. So we have to get to the right providers. They're going to sell it by the slice as opposed to selling whole systems to, to those types of users. So it's both, but the, the good news is um, the feature function that people need is very similar, whether it's a, a guy doing his own private cloud or a public cloud. And, that, and we get that a lot from our customers that once they install it, the, the one thing they tell us is, is their most important feature is our ease of use. So we do really complicated stuff, but they do it real easily. So we had um, one of our largest customers was in uh, for our Enterprise Advisory Board last week, and I think they have 400 terabytes of storage uh, on Compellent. And he says he spends less than two hours a week managing his his data his, his, his storage area network and so that now that used to be several people managing his old environment so yeah, that's the kind of things you need to to be able to deliver for him there but this uh, this cloud that the other thing that's really going to drive though is just a lot more so we have this t automated tiered storage you know on a on a single platform you're going to have to do things like that across platforms and across geographies and across locations so. We really think we have the foundation for what the cloud's going to need and want and demand as far as storage systems go. But uh, you can't just have a bunch of disk drives all spread out across the cloud. you got to kind of manage it as a system, if you know what I mean. Otherwise, the management's going to get out of control and cause all sorts of security and availability challenges. So, which are the industry segments that are growing? We're, we're, uh, we're a horizontal application. So it, it turns out it doesn't matter what the industry is. You need to have email, file and print, databases. So we're across industry. We have no one industry that represents more than 11% of our revenue. Now that being said, I'll tell you some of the faster growing industries and ones that we're succeeding very well in is healthcare is the number one. And if you you kind of think about that, you know, health information used to be kind of textual data about you and I as a patient or whatever. Then it went to two-dimensional images. Now. When they store data about us, they're, they're storing a movie about our, you know, procedure we have here, and it's it's very, you know, large files that thing. And then healthcare also is kind of the um, kind of the forerunner, uh, kind of the, the poster child for retention. You know, government government regulations have said you can't throw any of it away. The ones are large. Government is a, a very big segment for us. Um, and what's kind of happened there? We see, you know, government budgets are very very tight now. But there's a big need to do an infrastructure upgrade within a lot of these agencies, and they, they're, it's sorely needed. They can't uh, keep doing it the old way. So that's been, with our efficiency, we've actually done really well in government agencies across the world uh, to try to help them provide uh, you know, better service to their, their constituents and, in a more efficient, uh, dollar-efficient manner, except for pound-efficient or euro-efficient, whatever you want to do. And then the third area that, that stands out is probably finance. The finance industry has uh, been real good for us also. So. Uh, how big is Compellent uh, in terms of turnaround, and uh, how big is the market? Is it? Yeah, so we, last year in 2009, our annual revenue was a, uh, a little over 125 million, 
And if you look at kind of the segment we're going after, you know, I always estimate it maybe like a $16 billion opportunity. So uh, we're the fastest growing uh, vendor in the storage industry here, but we got a long ways to go to really get the, the large market share. But uh, so it's very large and uh, we're going after it. Where what we've done is focused on storage and do best of breed and go very deep. And that's why you've seen innovation like thin provisioning, automated tiered storage, our fast track, how we tier the platters, how we do our live volume, how we do portable volume. You know, those are really kind of the, the major innovations of the last decade for primary storage. And they all came from all on the, our hardware architecture is very simple, but it's elegant. And what we do is we leverage industry standard off the shelf hardware. So the way we wrote our software, we're kind of hardware agnostic. So the advantage for an end user is that with that, with that strategy that we have there, when new technologies come out, they can easily just implement it in the system they bought four or five years ago. So I gave the example of uh, Ohio State University, which is our first customer we shipped product to you know, way back in 2003. Last year, they added, were able to add solid state disk drives into that system they bought that many years ago. So it, it literally has that long a life and it's, uh, as we say, designed for persistence. So this hardware architecture is simple but elegant. And then on the software side, it's, uh, it's, it's all about you know, two things here. It's you know, continuous availability, so things that help them with high levels of availability and recovery and you know, disaster recovery and easily implement those things. And then the second key selling feature is just our efficiency. So we get rid of a lot of waste. Um, I gave a lot of examples in my keynote of, of customers where you know, day one when they implemented with us, they were able to recover 70% of their, their old used capacity. So in other words, they were wasting it uh, yesterday, they come to Capella and they, we immediately give them 70% of their storage resource right back to them for other business uses. So that whole efficiency thing, if we can cut their storage costs in half, they get pretty excited and that's exactly what happens.